find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show 103 with Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here in Mayhem Studio in wonderful, blustery, cold, frozen tundra of Pittsburgh, PA. But we're not one of those podcasts that talks about the local weather because you don't give a crap. But uh, of course, a video producer here helping out some of the local feds, including the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and some other fun projects, including the Montreal Theory with Joe Dabrowski uh, that you can check out over at IndieWrestling.us. Plug. But also uh, my good friend from San Antonio, Texas, uh, with us as well, Eamon Payton at Eamon2, please, uh, representing the voice of the Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, who just I was going to say, I, I, I know you just mentioned so, but can we talk about the weather on the show? Because no, I... there, was, there was frost in Texas this week. Oh, jeez. I, I have a lot of opinions about that. Oh, no. I, I just got word that, uh, that, 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 that a snowstorm may threaten the double header of indie shows that I have to cover for video this weekend. Oh. Uh, but anyways, no. Well, we, maybe that could be a topic for some other time. But in the meantime, <laughs> check out everything WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can subscribe to this and so many other shows on iTunes, uh, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, iHeartRadio, all over the place, uh, wherever you like to get, hear, or view uh, a show such as this. Or you can drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com is the email address. Uh, you can scope that. Out. Let us know uh, your thoughts on people that we've interviewed. If we've uh, announced somebody coming up on the show, if you can drop some questions to us, or or let us know who you think we should be interviewing. We're, we're actually looking into some of the people that people have emailed and said, "Hey, this guy could be good to talk to." Uh, so we are looking into those things. You can also drop us a line to at uh, at Mayhem Show on the Twitters or Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, on the Facebook as well. We got a great Wrestling Mayhem Show group over there, Facebook group. Please join us there. A lot of great conversation. I've seen a lot of new names over there. Uh, thank you so much. Keep that competition uh, co- uh, conversation going. It really does inform kind of what we talk about on these shows as well. Uh, so so great, great, great stuff to see that. Even who are we talking to this week? Uh, we got a very special guest this week. I'm very excited to have him on. Uh, I actually get to see him wrestle. Uh, for the very first time for Inspire Pro Wrestling back uh, during our Fun 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 Fest shows. Uh, uh, he's a St. Louis native who is uh, making his way up in the professional wrestling scene. And I'm very excited to have him on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Austin Blackburn. Austin, how are you this evening? I'm doing great. How are you guys tonight? Fantastic. Very excited to have you on. Um, I guess the best way to sort of start this off, and it's kind of a uh, an icebreaker question of sorts that we like to ask all our guests, because, uh, uh, I mean, Everyone we had on got into wrestling one way or the other, but uh, uh, what's your first ever memory of watching professional wrestling? My first ever memory of watching professional wrestling, uh, it's a very vague memory, but I just remember uh, when I was younger, me and my brother, we used to have a bunk bed, and we used to always watch Monday Night Raw uh, when it was the old school setup with like the square Titan, the square gray Titan Tron. And I would remember we watched Monday Night Raw uh, on our bunk beds. And I don't have any real memories of, like, the shows, but I just know we would watch a lot of Monday Night Raw every week. So I guess the first memory I have of watching pro wrestling was I used to watch SmackDown on Thursday night. And this is going to be sort of telling of my age. But <laughs> uh, when John Cena was feuding with the big show around WrestleMania 20 was when I really started to get into pro wrestling. And my first WrestleMania I ever watched was WrestleMania 20. Uh, like I said, it's going to be very telling of how young I actually am, but I remember I was so excited when John Cena won the United States title from Big Show at WrestleMania 20, and then that's when I was hooked, and uh, so I guess that's my real first memory of watching professional wrestling. Awesome. I'm very happy about that because I'm usually the one that's um, very telling of that as well. So I'm so um, glad it's, Eamon it's has see, it's good to see somebody with, around the same range. Like, I'm so glad Eamon wrestling. has a friend because <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm sorry. I'm an old head. I'm I'm a uh, Hulk Hogan. Paul Orndorff is my first memory kind of age so to, to age myself. Uh, so that's great. That's awesome. Uh, but uh, sort of the transition from from watching to becoming a wrestler, when did you, I guess, first find out that you could become a professional wrestler? Um, you know, honestly, I didn't really know 
independent wrestling really existed outside of obviously places like Ring of Honor was really the only independent wrestling I really knew of. I only really knew of the big companies like WWE, uh, TNA, stuff like that. Uh, and I actually went to college this past a uh, couple of years or a year ago, I believe, when I was 18. And I didn't really know too much about indie wrestling. And I just happened to Google it one day at college when I was bored. And I found a couple shows around around the St. Louis area. And I was like, wow, this is, I never really knew this existed. And I stumbled on one of the websites, uh, ended up finding that there was a way you could actually get trained and get on these shows. So until about a year and a half ago, I didn't even know independent wrestling really existed in the area. And then just stumbled upon uh, ways, you know, guys can get trained and uh, end up working these shows. And I knew once I finished that semester of college, that's something that I wanted to do. Cause I always thought when I was younger, Hey, I want to be a pro wrestler, but I never knew how to get into the professional wrestling business. And when I sort of got a taste like, Hey, I can maybe get into this business. I definitely knew that when I ended that semester at college, I was going to go straight into training. And I ended up uh, coming back home from college about three hours away, starting training. And I haven't gone back to college since I've been fully focusing on wrestling. So it was definitely probably the greatest decision of my life. Uh, all the great people that I've met and I just really enjoyed it. So, and I haven't looked back since it's been about a little over a year since I started training. So Awesome. And then uh, I know uh, you are one of the, uh, you trained under Michael Elgin. Was Elgin who you started with or, or where exactly did you get your sort of start uh, training? Uh, yeah, I did start training with Michael Elgin. Um, found out about his school through a couple of buddies that I had met initially, like going to shows. Uh, and I heard about Michael Elgin's school. And at the time, I, I don't, <laughs> I know this was going to offend Elgin if he ever hears it. But I actually had no idea who Michael Elgin was when somebody said, hey, down, you know, down in downtown St. Louis, Michael Elgin, he, he's running a wrestling school. And I honestly had no idea who Michael Elgin was because I hadn't really watched much Ring of Honor. I was pretty much just the guy who watched WWE and TNA on Monday nights or whatever. So a guy, you know, a guy I knew, uh, his name's Everett Connors, if he's listening, uh, told me about Michael Elgin's school. So I ended up training there. and. It was a really, really cool experience. Uh, I'm going to take this time to put over Mike Logan's training. If anybody in the St. Louis area wants to be a professional wrestler, he is the one to go to. He is the best trainer in the area. And honestly, I owe him a huge, huge credit to, to how fastly I've learned and uh, how quickly I've picked up the business. Uh, but like I said, if it wasn't through word of mouth around the area about his school, I probably never would have stumbled on it. And I'm really, really appreciative that I found out about his school. So uh, I didn't really like find out about his school on the internet. It was kind of just a word of mouth thing. And luckily, it all worked out. Awesome. And we've actually uh, had Everett on the show in the past, and he kind of talked about his training with uh, Elgin as well. Uh, is there any uh, particular thing with his training that he really tries to instill in his students uh, 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 that, that you kind of picked up on uh, training with them? So one thing I really like about uh, Elgin School as far as other professional wrestling schools is a lot of professional wrestling schools, they'll teach you the basics and they'll teach you how to bump and they'll teach you moves and then they'll be like, okay, you're ready to work shows. But with Elgin, it's a, it's a full package. It's okay, we're going to – your first day training, the first thing you do in a match, we're going to teach you how to do that. And it's kind of – his training is sort of like a match. So you're going to learn the beginning, the beginning basic stuff. And then as you go on, you're going to get deeper and deeper. And so what's really cool is psychology is a huge, huge role in training. It's not just moves. It's not just, this is how you do a suplex. This is how you do a body slam. It's okay. This is how you do a suplex and a body slam. How are we going to work this into a match? How are we going to make it make sense? How is it going to you know get a reaction out of the crowd? And that's what I really enjoy is the psychology aspect and where are we going to put this in the match? Not, because anybody can learn how to do a suplex. Anybody can learn how to do a body frame. Anybody can learn how to put a hold on. But it's where to put that in the match, how to execute it, and how to get a reaction out of the fans. And I also, he always, uh, selling is a huge thing, but I honestly think psychology is the best thing that uh, Elgin's training has helped me with. Um, because like I said, there's some schools in the area that are just going to teach you moves, and then they're going to be like, okay, you're ready to work shows. Mm -hmm. But professional wrestling is a lot more than just 
knowing how to do good moves. You know what I mean? So um, definitely think Elgin's school is separated because he's a guy who has worked at a very, very, very high level in professional wrestling. And he knows what separates a ring of honor level match from a normal indie match that you would see at any other wrestling show. So I think that's kind of how his training differs from all the other schools around the area. Very cool. Definitely. Um, uh, going back, uh, kind of almost back to this, we have a few questions actually from our chat room uh, that I want to bring up or, or topics, I guess you could say. Uh, uh, I want to point out guest filthy ask, uh, to ask him about his brother choke slamming him for a living. Uh, <laughs> is there any story behind that? Um, yeah. Uh, back when we <laughs> used to watch wrestling, I guess, uh, I was kind of the, the, the dummy, uh, to all of the moves that he wanted to try. Cause obviously I was the younger brother of two. So I was the one taking all of the moves. I was never doing any of them. So I guess it, it's kind of cool now thinking back because me being a smaller guy, I usually do not give a lot of moves. I usually take a lot of moves. So it's kind of funny uh, that somebody brought that up because I think that might actually be my brother who brought that up. Uh, but that, that's actually, yeah, I used to be just take, hey, oh, I saw someone in that raw. Let me try this. Sometimes I wouldn't even agree. It would just get done to me anyway. So uh, I remember taking the pedigree, Triple H's finisher, uh, on the bed. That was the most terrifying thing ever because both my arms were hooked and I was just getting slammed straight in the face. So I remember that move in particular being very terrifying. But uh, yeah, that's probably my brother in the chat that said that. <laughs> I have a feeling. Uh, no, that's awesome though. Um, going back to sort of your career stuff, because I think uh, another really cool thing about you, uh, especially from you know how long you've been wrestling, is you've been doing a good amount of traveling. Uh, uh, obviously, you've done a couple of dates in Texas. Uh, I know you worked FIP uh, as part of the trios tournament. Uh, you've, I believe you've done Ring of Honor as well. Uh, what's it like? Uh, is that something also that you know has been instilled in you a lot? Is you know the idea of traveling and getting your name out there? Um, yeah, honestly, I, I love traveling. Uh, there's a lot of people who they don't really like those long car rides, but honestly, I love traveling. Uh, over the past. My first match was in April, and I believe by May, I was on the road every weekend. Whether it was working or not, whether it was wrestling on shows, I would ask guys, hey, you got an open spot in the car for this show? And I would tag along. I'd bring my gear just in case. You know, sometimes I wouldn't even wrestle, but I would always try to learn something. I'd always try to make connections, meet new people, because that's the best thing to do in wrestling. I, I uh, learned from a couple guys, I want to mention, uh, the submission squad who I teamed with at FIP for the trio tournament. Uh, Gary J, Evan Jalistico, and Pierre Abernathy, they sort of uh, helped take me on the road when I was very, very new, when I was a month in. Uh, the first indie show I ever went to was with Gary J and Davey Vega and Pierre Abernathy, and they, I sort of just was firing questions at them, you know. Uh, so they helped me a lot to just, hey, Gary, you got a spot in the car? I'll, I'll drive. I'll do whatever to get my to learn, to get myself out there, to make connections. Uh, and I still do now to this day, uh, try to find, Hey, anybody got an open spot in the car? Cause I love the road. I love traveling. I love the brotherhood of pro wrestling and I, I want to learn any way I can. So if I'm in a car with a guy, uh, who has been wrestling 10 years, I'll pick his brain. I'll ask him about stuff. And even guys, uh, that I train with when I travel, I still, I'm able to learn from them as well. Cause they're kind of guys who are on the same experience level as me. Uh, I just really enjoy learning everything about professional wrestling. So getting out on the road and traveling, that's the best way because I feel like being around wrestling every weekend is the best way to keep it in your brain and to just, uh, you know, being around it every weekend is the best way to improve. And I'm always looking to improve. So anytime I'm booked on a show, even if I'm not booked, I'll still tag along just to be around professional wrestling. So I've been trying to be on the road as much as possible. That's awesome. And I think, uh, a lot of times when, you know, you, you, you know, indie wrestlers sort of talk about traveling and stuff like that, it's either of, of that opinion or sort of the, the struggles that come with traveling. And, and uh, especially like some of the, you know, places you've been, those are long stretches, you know, Texas, Florida, places like that. Um, and, and like the guys that you mentioned that, uh, that you sort of travel, have traveled with have made those long trips and I think sort of share that similar attitude with you. Um, yeah, I, I think, do you, you think that's, you know, the way to look at it is, you know, treat, you know, those car rides and stuff like that as, you know, experiences to learn. Yeah. I know a lot of guys say the car is the best place to learn. And I do, 
uh, agree with that a lot. Whether it's just a story about a, about a, t- a match that a guy had, you can always learn something. Uh, something I was really afraid of well, when I first started wrestling, obviously I'm a smaller guy, and I would ask people like, hey, what, what happens if somebody tries to take advantage of me when I'm in the ring and try like beating me up? I would ask questions like that. I would, Or I would be like, oh, uh, what happens if I feel my safety is threatened and this guy is just manhandling me? And that's the kind of questions that I would ask in the car that necessarily you would kind of sound weird asking that in, in a training atmosphere where there's other guys trying to work on stuff and you're just like, hey, I have a question. What happens if a guy starts beating me up in the ring? You know what I mean? So uh, a lot of those weirder questions that are good to know, I would ask them in the car when I was traveling with guys. And I was I was the kind of the, the kid who was asking those weird questions. So I definitely think the car is a great place to learn. And I still learn to this day every weekend when I'm in the car. Definitely. Uh, also, a few more uh, questions that we have uh, from the chat room from a uh, uh, guest major uh, who also asked uh, your most major moment in a match. Uh, I, I feel that's another one that's maybe going somewhere. But um, so the most, uh, I think I know what he's going for. I think the match that I had with Barry J back in August of 2015 at a place called Pro Wrestling Championship Series in Granite City, Illinois. Uh, it was my first time ever wrestling him. I'd been friends with him for a cup for quite a bit, and it was the first time uh, I ever got to wrestle him. Uh, people who know Gary know that he hits very hard. He's known mm-hmm. for his chop. Um, so that match was the first time, because I've never been in an actual fight, and I he, he does hit very safely, but he also hits very hard. And I remember he gave me a forearm strike at the beginning of the match, and it rattled me like it was it was completely safe, but I'd never been hit that hard in my life. And so it's sort of like, OK, yep, I'm in the ring with Gary J. And I think what he's asking is like uh, that the most major moment was like that was the first time I was like, OK, I'm in a ring with a guy who who because that's the first opponent I ever wrestled who was known for like. Uh, his striking ability. So, and his chops were were very major, and they were very painful. I actually still have uh, scars on my chest to this day. Uh, when I look in the mirror in the morning when I'm getting ready, I can still see a little bit of Gary's handprint. And that match was almost five or six months ago. So, uh, that's probably the most major moment I've had in wrestling. Also, uh, wrestling for you know, I was blessed with an opportunity that I really honestly didn't deserve. There's a lot of guys in the area who deserved it more than I did, but I was able to get an opportunity on, at the pre-show of uh, Ring of Honor for my seventh match ever. And it was like my seventh match. I was still so new and I was given an opportunity just because I showed up. Uh, and so that was also really, really kind of surreal, I guess, uh, because I was so new and, I was able to, to to really get that opportunity and it really helped fuel my passion to get better and to learn more that way. If ever in the future I'm presented with a, that opportunity again, I can be ready and do the best I can to, to impress. So I guess that's the answer to that question. Kind of went on a tangent there, but uh, that's, no. my, that's my answer. <laughs> that's awesome though. It's really cool. Uh, and, and then one more question from the chat room from just uh, Jolly Ollie who asked if you'll be his Valentine. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, definitely one of a very intriguing chat room tonight. Uh, more than well, that. Uh, well, actually, I do have plans on Valentine's Day, which is the 14th of February. Um, I will be at a show called St. Louis Anarchy, That's and the they are running the February 13th and 14th in Alton, Illinois, at the Knights of Columbus in Alton. So that's where I will be if you want to be my valentine anybody who's listening you should definitely come out to st louis anarchy that weekend even if you don't want to be my valentine if you just want to see good wrestling come out to st louis anarchy in alton illinois if you live anywhere within three to four hours driving distance it is worth it uh i believe chris hero just got announced he will be there Uh, a lot of other really really good guys davy vega gary j matt fitchett everett connors um all really good really good talent in the independent scene uh, if you want to be my Valentine, come out. You could even be Gary's Valentine. You can be Fitch's, Davey Vegas, anybody. Uh, so 
guess uh, Joel Yoli, I believe, who's that. If you want to go to yeah. Valentine's, come out to St. Louis Anarchy that weekend. Awesome, definitely. Um, and and going back to sort of your travels and stuff like that, is there any uh, place uh, in particular you kind of want to eventually work? Maybe uh, uh, either promotion or just like, you know, area, you know, wise. Is there any place that specifically is kind of on your radar? Uh, it's, it's, it's funny you ask this because actually the, a place that I really want to wrestle that's on my radar is actually Inspire Pro in, mm. in, uh, in Austin. Uh, I, I went to a couple of Inspire shows with a couple of guys and I watched the show and I, the atmosphere at Inspire is really awesome. Uh, so I got a chance to, to wrestle for Inspire at Fun 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 Fest which was an outside sort of festival show. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I would really like to wrestle uh, at the venue you guys have in Austin. It's a really cool venue. Uh, So Inspire is definitely a place that I'd have on my radar. Uh, I'd love to go back to FIP, Full Impact Pro in Florida. That was one of my favorite weekends ever of professional wrestling. Um, Also, Atlanta Wrestling Entertainment in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been there a couple times. Uh, Really great really great. The thing I like about wrestling is I love wrestling in front of passionate fans because that, you know, you can wrestle in some of these towns and it's like the people are just like, okay, it's wrestling show every Friday and they're there, but there's the other fans and places you go like inspire FIP, you know, places like evolve that are kind of bigger, um, you know, inspire. You can tell that those fans want to be there and they want to get into wrestling. You know, they just, they're just excited to see wrestling. And those are the people that I like wrestling in front of because sometimes I go and wrestle places and people have no idea who I am, but they want to see wrestling. So they're going to cheer for me or they're going to boo whoever I'm wrestling. And those are the places that I like to go because the the fans really want to be there and they want to get into the show. And that makes my job a lot more fun. And because nobody likes to wrestle in front of a crowd who's sitting on their hands. Mm-hmm. So any place that has rabid fans, passionate wrestling fans, that's where, that's where I want to perform in front of. Absolutely. Uh, going into some of our uh, kind of regular questions that we have on the show that we asked uh, all of our guests, um, what are you watching currently wrestling wise, uh, whether it comes to, you know, uh, for studying purposes or for recreation, is there anything that you kind of sort of have your eye on right now? Um, so I'll separate it into like studying and what I'm watching right now as far as like learning, or, like entertainment wise, mm-hmm. uh, because I still like watching wrestling as a fan. I feel like oh, uh, a lot of guys feel like oh, I'm watching wrestling. I have to, I have to study. I have to, you know, take notes. Which I believe there's a time where I watch wrestling to study, and there's also a time where I watch wrestling as a fan and to have fun. You know, so for studying, uh, you know, I was born in '96, so I like to go back and watch a lot of stuff from '96. Uh, a lot of Shawn Michaels uh, from '96. I, I like to pick up a lot of selling. Uh, there's a couple. There's some small things. Uh, like if a heel would do something to Shawn Michaels, uh, dirty, like pull his hair, pull his ear, uh, you know, stuff like that. He would always get that back on, on the heel in some way. And I felt that was really cool. I was watching a lot of Shawn Michaels to get little stuff like that. Um, and I, feel, I just watch a lot of old stuff as far as studying because I don't really like studying current stuff because then if you – people can tell that you're like taking stuff that people are doing right now. But I have uh, something funny that somebody told me is like, you can steal stuff from 1996 and use it now and nobody will know. Cause it's been, it's been 20 years. Yeah. So, uh, I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, but for entertainment purposes, um, I do watch, I, I watch the current WWE product, but only like, uh, as like a social gathering, I watch pay-per-views with friends. Um, I really like, a lot of people uh, give me crap for it, but I love watching PWG just because I have very bad ADHD, so I need to see stuff constantly happening in fast-moving spots and stuff. I really enjoy PWG. Um, I The current Ring of Honor product is great. There's a lot of great uh, wrestling at, uh, on Ring of Honor right now, a lot of diversity. So, and, But I also like going on YouTube and just searching up independent wrestling from around the area and studying guys who I might wrestle in the future. So I'm all over the place as far as wrestling goes. I really enjoy watching NXT as well. Um, I'm, I'm not too much of an impact guy. Uh, I haven't really watched too much of that. Uh, but if, if it's on every now and then, I will. But the problem is where I live, I don't have like cable television. So it's really hard to watch Monday Night Raw. It's really hard to watch Impact every week. So I watch a lot of NXT because I have the network. 
I watch a lot of Ring of Honor that I can find on the internet. I watch a lot of PWG on, that I can find on the internet, or I get DVDs uh, from guys. So it's hard for me to keep up on the current up-to-date product, but I'm always trying to watch old stuff or watch current stuff to uh, learn as much as I can or study small things. So Awesome. Very cool. Uh, and, and the last question we kind of ask our guests all the time is, uh, uh, and people take this in many different directions, so uh, feel free. Uh, what is, in your opinion, the best thing about indie wrestling and the worst thing about indie wrestling? Um, so I'll start with the worst thing, and then we'll progress. Honestly, there's not too much I hate about indie wrestling because, obviously, I love it, and I choose to do it every weekend. I choose to train. and uh, But I would say probably the biggest downside to indie wrestling is there's a lot of guys out there who are really, really good, but they just haven't got that opportunity to, to break out or to be seen, I guess, or they, cause there's only so many spots at the highest point of wrestling. There's only so many spots for people to make money and make a living out of wrestling. So I feel like that's probably the worst part about indie wrestling is there's a lot of guys who should be making a living wrestling. There's a lot of talented guys in the area, but there's only so many spots. And that's why it's awesome to see. And this is transitioning into the best thing about indie wrestling is there's a lot of good talent that's not signed or that isn't making money that wrestle at these shows around the area that you can go see and it's very cheap and you can go see great wrestling and great indie guys uh, for very cheap. Like a place like, I'll put it over again, uh, St. Louis Anarchy, just about 30 minutes from St. Louis and there's guys there who deserve, they deserve opportunities that evolve. They deserve opportunities to be seen but Unfortunately, it doesn't always work like that. Work out like that in indie wrestling. And obviously, I've only been in it for a year. This is just what I've picked up on. Uh, so I'm sure guys, ten years down the road, will say there's a different worst part of wrestling. Mm. But from what I can see, uh, for me, there isn't too much that I don't like about it. But I feel like there is a lot of talent that needs to be seen. Um, but like I said, there's only so many spots to make money off of uh make a living off pro wrestling but the best thing about it is you have shows like st louis anarchy sip inspire uh places like that where you have a lot of great talent and a lot of great fans and so at the end of the night at the end of weekends of like shows like that i'm really just like this is why i got into wrestling you know great matches top to bottom great fans fans are leaving happy to see the next show they don't feel like their money has been wasted they're not going on the internet and complaining how bad the show was you know what i mean so uh it's just really great to see indie wrestling on the rise right now and it's great to see good wrestling uh good promotion so i'd say that's probably the best thing about indie wrestling is just seeing how good wrestling can be when it's when it's good you know what i mean because mm -hmm. wrestling can suck but when wrestling is good it's really good and it's really awesome so uh, that's probably my favorite thing about it. Very cool. Uh, before we let you go, I'm going to run through a few more questions that we have in the chat room. Uh, uh, get to a few oh, of these. Get to a few of these ones that we can ask because some of the some of them are uh, interesting. To say the least. Um, uh, Guest filthy also asks. Uh, he says, besides being a John Cena fanboy, who's your next favorite wrestler and why? Oh, um, well. <laughs> I would definitely, uh, yeah, I grew up as a John Cena fan. That's how that's how young I actually am. But I definitely would say my favorite wrestler now um, to watch is probably um, El Generico slash Sami Zayn. Um, I used to live with a buddy who uh, that had a bunch of El Generico DVDs, best of El Generico, and I would I would spend days where I didn't have to work. I would spend days just watching El Generico all day. Um, I would pick up a lot of his selling, his mannerisms, uh, selling behind the mask, because obviously he, he can't show facial expressions behind the mask. So how can he sell without using facial expressions like body language? You know what I mean? So I would watch a lot of El Generico to pick up on that stuff. And he's, he was just super entertaining. Sami Zayn now in NXT, when he got injured, that was really unfortunate because I really enjoyed watching his stuff. So uh, I would say besides being a John Cena fanboy, quote unquote, <laughs> Uh, Sami Zayn is definitely my next favorite wrestler as far as uh, to watch and to study and to be entertained by. It's both great watching Sami Zayn. So, very cool. That's probably my second favorite wrestler. <laughs> awesome. Uh, also, guest that Tregar asked, and this one's very interesting. Uh, any truth to the rumor that you'll be an entrant to this year's Super Indie? And of course, Sorg uh, 
uh, video production for IWC. So, hey, you know, is, is there any truth to that? Maybe Sorg will get to see you uh, very soon. <laughs> Um, you know, I, uh, I can't say if that rumor is true, uh, but if it is, if in theory it were true, I would be very excited to do that. So, uh, uh, I can't say there's any truth to that rumor, but if it was true, I'm super stoked for it. And I, uh, definitely hope it happens. Wink, wink. Awesome. Very cool. And then, uh, one last one from, uh, just a prank bro. He just asked, uh, other than wrestling, what do you, what do you like to do in your free time? Oh, I like to play a lot of video games. Uh, I Before I got into pro wrestling, I was a huge player of video games. Uh, right now, uh, I've been playing a lot of League of Legends. I played a little bit of Call of Duty, but right now I uh, play a lot of League of Legends. Um, watch, you know, watch TV, watch The Office, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, um, Breaking Bad, my favorite show of all time. Uh, and I also work at a restaurant so if i'm not working and i'm not wrestling i'm usually playing league of legends or some kind of video game with friends uh or i'm watching netflix or i'm watching wrestling so uh if it's not wrestling or work it's probably video games uh or just watching wrestling and uh getting ideas for for stuff i can do at future shows or how to learn or how to improve very cool uh very awesome uh and one last thing also guess Sammy Zane says thanks dude uh, for that for you <laughs> so oh, and also, <laughs> nice. uh, I wanted I wanted to touch on this just in case he's listening uh, or anywhere uh, Davey Vega I yeah. want to wrestle him <laughs> at some point and this was this was brought up this was kind of a little joke we have on Twitter that was also associated with this podcast and I want to just have it on audio record. Any any promotion, any promoter that wants to book that match, you will not be disappointed. Um, Davey swears that he will never wrestle me in his entire career, so we need to make that happen at some point. Um, and I do have faith that it will happen. So, Davey, if you're listening to this, we will wrestle one day. And we should be traveling this weekend together for 12 hours, so we can go ahead and talk about how great that match is going to be for 12 hours. And maybe we'll wrestle this weekend. I hope so. But, uh, yeah, anybody who's listening who wants to book that match, you should definitely do that. And also, uh, my friend Everett Connors, uh, book him against Matt Fishett or book her for the tag. You know, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not too picky. Just put me and Everett Connors in a ring with Davey Vega and Matt Fishett. And I'm not calling them out by any means, but I'm calling them out. (laughs) Well, I'll, I'll have to put uh, uh, that note in the year of the Inspire Pro uh, bookers and see. <laughs> we'll have to have that match whether Vega likes it or not. Um, Definitely. So, so uh, again, thank you very much, Austin, for coming on the show and, and talking with us. Uh, if people want to follow you on uh, social media uh, or, or if you have any upcoming events that you're going to be on that people can check you out at, uh, feel free to uh, click away. Uh, so my Facebook is Austin Blackburn. Search me on there. Send me a firm request. I will accept you. That's usually where I post a lot of uh, where I'm going to be, different shows like that. I'm also very active on Twitter. Uh, follow me at Blackburn underscore AB. Um, and also follow my bay on Twitter at Everett Connors. Uh, he's making a lot of waves uh, in the area. He's also relatively new to the business like me. And he's great. And he is very talented. So follow him on Twitter as well. But yeah, those are the two social media platforms that I use uh, frequently. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, So once again, thank you very much, Austin, for coming on and checking us out. Uh, If you see Austin Blackburn on an upcoming event near you, be sure to check it out and see uh, uh, Austin uh, get it done in the professional wrestling ring. Uh, We're going to take a quick break and take a look at everything that happened this past week in Sogatron Media, and we'll be right back. want to bring back uh, uh, Armando Estrada. He was a lot of fun. Triple H, why not aim for the stars? Let Triple H come down from his throne and, and deign our uh, our podcast with his uh, ratings boosting presence. I definitely want to see more uh, Lucha Underground uh, wrestlers related, but I think that the major show has been missing my co-patreon partner, Bo Diddy. Bo, I am calling you out. We want you back. I would like them to get some some quality time with someone behind the scenes. Maybe like uh, Joey Styles. 
or even Paul Heyman. I want to see the, I want to see Bill Peduto, the beloved mayor of Pittsburgh, on the Wrestling Mayhem show. Super Oprah and Oprah, and everybody gets presents from both. That's double the presents. I know Sorg has the connection, so I think we eventually need to get Virgil. Like I think that's the that's the we've made it and all that. The quintessential. That's it's, exactly it's, that it's gotta it's gotta happen. I don't think we have to do any more podcasts after that. We we peaked at that point. Booker T's on my list. And that seems like more possible every day, it seems so. But no, I, I'd like to also kind of return to some guests that we've talked to in the past that we haven't talked to in several years. Like, I'd love to see if we can get Johnny Gargano on before he gets scooped up by WWE completely, for instance. I want to see Big E on our couch. I'd imagine he'd be more sprawled because I don't think all of his muscles would fit on it. I'll, I'll echo Garza's statement that we should get some Lucha Underground people. Uh, I would also like Jimmy DeMarco to come back on the main show. Uh, personally, he's a personal favorite of mine. Also, I feel that the Mayhem shows only have one real bad interview. And I feel like there's a redemption story happening in 2016. And I think we need to bring back Puppet. <laughs> I feel like we need to bring back Puppet because we were talking about Puppet on the TNA Asylum show. So I feel like that needs to be part of this redemption story. I, I think we can do this again. And we're back. It's the Indie Mayhem Show. And uh, again, that was a little bit of our 10-year anniversary. You're going to see a bit of those videos for a while now. Uh, we celebrated uh, 10 years of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And hey, we got a whole two years down of this show. So that's exciting, too. Um, uh, we got to hang out at Looking for Group. And a lot of people came down, including friend of the show of this show, Andrew Palace. Came down and played some video games, as, as you, uh, you probably heard in that video as well. A video audio, depending on where you're, you're catching this. And uh, please stay tuned to the, to the YouTube for Wrestling Mayhem Show. And also over on the Facebook, we're going to have other videos popping up as well uh just celebrating 10 years we've been around let's 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 freaking celebrate this year man and uh and really kind of put over that 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 we've been doing this for a while and we've been having a lot of fun and met a lot of really really great awesome people and it was good to kind of just get together uh with at least the local people that are part of the show and some chad the shag coming back from early days of wrestling mayhem show and just good fun stuff uh, and you, know, you never know. Maybe we'll be reaching out and trying to get some of those people uh, on the show that we talked about there in that video. So, Eamon, I went to wrestling. The tour, the great indie tour of Pittsburgh continues for me. <laughs> Last week, I talked about how I went out to Vicious Outcast Wrestling in their new venue uh, down at the Laurel Mall in Connellsville, PA. And it was, it's an old Carmike theater. It was pretty cool the way they gutted it and they, and they worked everything out there. I went to something also at a mall this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we had him on the show, and 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 this is one of those, you know. So I, I'll be completely honest with a lot of this stuff. Um, I there are far too many wrestling promotions I feel in the greater Southern Pittsburgh specifically area, and I think, uh, and this was kind of like the oh no, not another one. But I got to go check this out. It's Code Red Wrestling. It's in the Century Three Mall, which is a very, very depressed mall. Now, now you've seen these. You've seen a mall that's like kind of on its way out, right, Amen? And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen those down there. Now, this was a. I ha, I've seen small malls like that have like a Kmart as the end cap. You know what I mean? Right. But this is one that was a giant mall, giant <laughs> mall, and it's on its way out. I could not believe how many shuttered stores there were in this thing. And people are even telling me this thing's going to be leveled within two years. It has to be, right? Uh, they mm -hmm. just lost the Macy's. All they have is a J.C. Penney's. Sears is already gone. Um, but if that means if you're starting a new wrestling promotion, you got a really cheap rent. So, I, you know, again, our friends, uh, uh, Sarah Feeney, who's been on the show, and Fleck, uh, they started this promotion out there. It's 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 in, uh, you know, one of these things kind of up on the third floor. Yes, this has a third floor in this mall. This is how freaking big this mall is, right? <laughs> and, uh, it, and, and it was interesting. And, and again, I, I, I kind of, you know, we look at a promotion like this, and I know we've talked about we don't want to talk about certain shows that don't have one access into appeal for kind of the mass audience out there. But I really yeah. want to make a case for, and, and this is all due respect, because I honestly think these guys do a really good job considering all the resources they have and being this is their fifth show. Their fifth show, okay? Um but I, I, I think there's a case for these smaller shows. Um, and again, like I said, it was, it was kind of a different atmosphere all around. 
Um, uh, but you know, you, you, you walk up and it's, it's in a, it's in a storefront, you know, the ring is not a, you know, not too far away from the front of what would be a store in a mall. Right. Mm. And there's even like the drop ceilings in a way they got really interesting how they, they kind of opened up the middle of it. So like it set up lights just on the ring. Um, and, and they're, they're shooting video and they actually do on their website. Oh, there's the $5 I won. Uh, from uh, from a completely uh, a complete bet that I did on the booking of the show. Uh, so <laughs> with, with, with with Chachi, I made five bucks off of that. So, uh, but it was fun. And 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 to be you know in this, the wrestling is not great. This is not blow away five star match. You know, great thing, right? Um, and 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 especially bringing somebody that this was their second wrestling show, indie wrestling show. Last the first one being VOW a week prior. Like even he's turning me in, in, and seeing some of those guys in the early matches. It's like this, this is this is not good, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but it picked up. It was a tag team tournament. Uh, again, fifth show. They're still kind of placing all the championships and everything and doing those in very interesting ways. Um, there's a tag team tournament uh, with eight teams to start. So you know, so there's there's about you know what seven matches of that. There was a women's title match. There was a, a heavyweight title match, and I think they had a great mix of talent and and, and it wasn't just a it, you know, i gotta give this to the fed this isn't one of those where everybody looked like a weekend warrior that didn't belong there right there were some kids there maybe you know obviously a little young and didn't look built up stuff like that but not like the old guy that's been doing this for 20 years and and, and yeah. maybe shouldn't be around anymore like it's a bunch of younger talent some some more veteran talent but maybe not you know the greatest you know but a good mix of guys i think all around you know a couple of them you're like you know, it, it was kind of very, being very judgmental at ringside, as, as especially Chachi is, you know, uh, uh, calling out some of that stuff. Like, guy yeah. with the kendo stick that j- had this kind of Amish beard and and just looked gruff the whole time. And it just, like, looked like it was somebody's younger brother, right? Um, right, yeah. But then there were there were little bits of, of glimmers of, okay, that's fun. One being so close and, and, and that the venue is so small, you hear every little thing. Like from the crowd and from the wrestlers, and that kind of makes that connection a little bit more. But even the things like this guy that comes out with uh, Dan, uh, Dan Sandwich, who is somebody who's been a favorite for us to discuss on the show. Um, I was going to say, I love me some Dan Sandwich. Well, check out who came out to him. It's this a, a big guy that is not Keith Hot. I, I've confirmed this is not Keith Hot, uh, uh, but the same build coming out in a lucha mask and a giant mug, and his name, Eamon. Are you ready for this? I don't know oh, if you I'm saw. Really the, I don't know if you saw the video on the Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Super Loco Hot Cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> so, so throughout the tournament, now, now this team and it ends up winning. Spoiler alert: ends up winning the tournament, right? Dan Sandwich and uh, Mira, I think the other guy's name, and they call themselves uh, S and M. Nice. Okay. I'm sad that the third person doesn't also have a food-related name. But there's that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, 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 super local hot cocoa. I just love saying it every time. Uh, and, and started <laughs> you yelling. You it completely. You have to st- say the full name. Super local hot cocoa. Um, second of the third matches comes out with marshmallows for his hot cocoa. Of course, because why? I mean, why wouldn't you? <laughs> And at a certain point, has a run-in with the guy with the kendo stick, uh, which I started affectionately calling Kendo Kevin by the end of the night. Um, <laughs> and he has a he has an, an encounter with him where he throws, and these are the tiny marshmallows, right? He throws the tiny marshmallows at, at Kendo Kevin. I don't know what the hell his name was. Um, and Ken, Kendo Kevin sells it like he's been shot. <laughs> like he's been shot. He's been on the floor for like five minutes at this time. I'm starting to worry that he got he got a delicious mars- marshmallow in the eye, or slipped on one something, and and then proceeded even finally got up and proceeded to sell it through the rest of the night. But that's, that's not even the craziest thing that that was. I think that was the, honestly that was the highlight for me. That was the, definitely the highlight for me. This may just the way you're describing this whole thing. This may be like my favorite indie show ever that I've never gone to. So then it gets weird. I don't know if you saw when it got no, weird on Twitter. Then it gets weird. Then it gets weird. Then the I think this is the match directly after this. So this is the fifth match, the match right before intermission, right? And we have the women's title match. And a wonderful, you know, Canadian girl comes out bouncing out of the back 
uh, it, it, and 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 I'm like, great. This she looks like she looks like a a woman's wrestler. She looks like she can go. And yeah. then we have Cheyenne comes out, who apparently has an S and M gimmick, which not okay. not the tag team name that we were just discussing. But she comes <laughs> out. She's got a whip. She's a very formidable looking woman. And that man with the ripped clothing and everything has Saran wrap around his head. That's, um, that's when it got weird. So it got a little like I thought we we're gonna like start seeing a snuff film in the middle of the ring or something. Good he's God. he's like standing on her on her. He's coming around the ring, and as he comes to our side, we're asking if he's okay. Does he have a safe word? Um, and it got weird. I mean, it does look like it did look like he's got some sort of um, uh, uh, mouth uh, cut open thing. Uh, and there he is. Uh, looks like he's he's about to do something to 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 Sarah Feeney that was involved in the match at a certain point. Um, it just I I don't I don't I don't know what I don't I don't I don't. It, does he, I'm still no processing words. this. There's no no no. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm not saying like wow that's a horrible. That, I'm not saying like that's a bad thing that I've seen in wrestling. That's the one of the more interesting things that I've seen in wrestling. So right off the bat. And they're they're getting. I mean, I mean, they're not getting, they're not getting, you know, hundreds of people or anything at these shows. But again, fifth, you know, the fifth show that they've done, uh, a very saturated and depressed area, right? Um, and right. they have people that are there and really into it. And I, I, and, and awesome for them. I think they're building something interesting. I think their wrestling is better than other feds that I've seen and maybe been a part of. That you know, five shows in, what they look like. Um, mm. And I, I I don't know where they 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 seek to go with something like this, uh, but uh, but no, I think it's a it's an interesting thing to go to. And this year, and I said this before, and I it's solidified here. I didn't see any familiar faces here, um, um, in the crowd that I've seen at all the other places, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that are right down the road, within fifteen minutes of each other. And uh, I I think I and I honestly I still this is again re solidifying. If any of these feds die off. If Code Reds goes away, if PWX goes away, if P- IWC goes away, they're in the South. I don't think you're going to see those people show up at the other feds. It's like yeah. when WCW died; those people just stopped going to local wrestling. Mm-hmm. Nobody's nobody's traveling for wrestling, you know. I really feel uh, in the area for the most part. Uh, you you do have a few, but. I, I think the most travel people go to IWC. That's my impression. I'm a little inside baseball on that, but but that that's my thing. Um, I don't know. And you've you've been to these shows now. You you've talked about the classically horrible indie shows that you've been to. Um, and, and and again, I don't want to call Code Code Red that. I think Code Red is doing very well. Yeah. With what they have, with with being the upstart, and and it you know, I, I they're doing the right things. They're doing the right things with how they deal with the crowd. They do the right things with how they're attempting to do uh, the online video stuff. Uh, so, so all props to them uh, for that stuff. So, but you know, you're not going to see a burnt barn burner, you know, rip down the house match like you know, like the guys that go get IWC and, and even even two point RWA matches these days. Well, I, I mean, or, I or Inspire Pro Wrestling, but yeah, but, and, I, and I just think there's promotions like that that you know aren't the bigger drawing promotions maybe necessarily or anything like that but they're promotions at least where wrestlers cut their teeth a bit you know what i mean and and you know try new things and and maybe just get their first sort of even shot so um i i you know there's a there's a need for them there are you know really crappy promotions and then where i think to me, I'm very much against the really crappy promotions that also run their business very poorly in the sense of right. maybe, you know, the right. backstage kind of stuff wise. Those promotions, I think, are the ones that really need to die out. You right. know what I mean? But, you know, as long as everything seems, you know, a success for them, if they're proud of, you know, what they put forward, then, you know, hey, you know, that's, you know, good for them. And like you said, they are providing something very different right 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 exactly there's a niche for this so check out code red wrestling in pittsburgh pa or 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 west mifflin pa i think officially uh just outside of town here um and again uh, i got I, you know it's 15 minutes from my house i, I can't beat that <laughs> you know yeah, that's pretty, yeah, I, yeah. I really can't beat that and it's a nice it's a nice saturday night and i'm seriously considering going to the next one uh on february 20th 
and, and the people. I need to see more of Super Loco Hot Cocoa. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I can. Will he have a T-shirt by the next one? I hope so. And, uh, <laughs> and Chachi enjoyed it. I mean, for Chachi and I, it, it's a it's a chance to to um, not. And he's not going to go all the way down to VOW, I don't think. I don't think he's going to do the hour drive for, for that thing. And, it, and it, it, that's one of the reasons I'm not there every month, to, to, to even just check that place out, is it's an yeah. hour drive away. Uh, it's the furthest away. And, uh, and, 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 and that opens it up. And it's nice for us that, that, that have to work two shows a month to just be able to sit back and watch some wrestling and be that close. And be able to yell at people and just be fans. And, and I know, I know the, I know even after the VOW, like some of the guys we ran into that are friends of the show and everything, and saying, "Oh, you, you, you effing marks out there." I'm like, dude, I'll mark, I'll mark every day. I, I don't care. I'm marking behind the, behind the camera. I'm marking behind the switcher. You know, you're marking on the microphone. I hear you. I yeah. Hear, I hear oh. how you go, Eamon. You're, oh, yeah. you, your, your job's the best. Is you get to talk and be a fan on a microphone. And 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 nine times out of ten, it actually works in the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's good stuff. Uh, speaking yeah, of which, was, yeah, Inspire Pro Wrestling was this past weekend. Um, uh, I was getting marked out hard a lot over that microphone <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> I heard good things. Like the tweets I saw, it looked like a good crowd. I saw the, uh, I saw the the, the group picture uh, on Facebook mm. and, and everything. So um, it, it sounds like you guys had another uh, teardown show to to really kind of start off the the year. Yeah, it was really really fun. Uh, our Ecstasy of Gold three event. Uh, top to bottom, I think one of our best cards yet. All of our wrestlers really delivered. Um, there were a lot of uh, you know younger sort of you know we had some uh, a flying guest and, and and some you know talents from outside of the state, but um, just our you know sort of local talent as well combined with them, like they all pulled out an amazing job tonight. All or, or excuse me, this past Sunday, um, all the matches were amazing uh, from top to bottom. Uh, uh, I mentioned our, our, our guest for that we get Eddie Kingston uh, coming down uh, to Russell Scott Summers. I, I get to spend a lot of time with Eddie uh, on Sunday. One of the nicest guys. I, I can't say enough great things about Eddie Kingston. Um, uh, and he's a guy that's been tearing it up in the Indies forever. So it's like, yeah. And, and he, you know, just getting his feedback and him loving getting to work for Inspire and, and being very happy about getting to work in Texas. And, you know, it was, it was a great feeling. Uh, the show also ended with Eddie Kingston uh, uh, pulling out a challenge to Ray Rowe for a uh, Battle Wars 3 event, which has not been confirmed yet or announced. But you know what? I think we have to, I think we have to do it now because, hey, um, I, I mean, I'm not, not to say I'm opposed to it because I would love to do it. Um, but uh, I, I think we're kind of forced to do it now, which is I'm very happy about it. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of fun stuff on that show. Um, there's a lot of really talented people down here in Texas and a lot of people who we've had on the show and, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with how things went. Um, crowd was packed, uh, which is always a great thing to see. Uh, we had to delay our bell time for like 15 minutes because of, you know, having to let people in basically. Mm -hmm. Um, it was also cool. We also, um, and because uh, on the Wrestling Mayhem show this week, we'll actually have Krista Joseph, co-executive producer from Lucha Underground, and we actually had some representatives from the El Rey Network show up, uh, uh, do a little promotion for uh, the season premiere coming up, nice. uh, pass out some merchandise, stuff like that. So yeah, it was a it was a fun little show that we got to put on, and and we're very excited for our year going into 2016. Um, yeah, it's it was really fun. Um, uh, speaking of going into 2016, our next event, uh, which you can already get tickets for at InspireProWrestling.com, is on February 28th, and that's our Faces of Vengeance event. Uh, from the events of uh, uh, Ecstasy of Gold 3, a lot of matches coming out from there. Uh, uh, we already announced uh, Viral Sensation Joey Ryan uh, taking on Cherry Ramones, which is prob which many people are calling the sleaziest match we may have ever booked. <laughs> um, uh, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff on there. Um, uh, Jessica James will be defending her XX Division title against the Inspire Pro debut of Brittany Wonder, which I'm very excited about. Brittany from the California area wrestled for wrestles for uh, primarily Hood Slam, which is probably one of the coolest promotions in the Indies right now. Um, very excited to have her uh, compete for us for the very first time on February 28th. Uh, and yeah, there's going to be more stuff coming out, more announcements that we'll be doing out. Uh, so yeah, follow us on inspireprowrestling.com and 
Twitter uh, Inspire Pro Res, Facebook Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, go check us out because uh, a lot of good stuff uh, coming into the works here. Awesome. Awesome. Great, great stuff. Then this weekend here in Pittsburgh, like I said, I got a doubleheader I'm dealing with with the uh, split production crews. Uh, first of all, uh, our friends, uh, Chachi, Chachi's going down. He's going to be heading up uh, the uh, RWA uh, uh, show in West Newton. Again, the one of the insanest crowds in the area, bar none. I will get that. That is the one thing I cannot compete anybody in the area uh, that I attend, and I, I've been to everybody. I will be at, have been at four different federations in Pittsburgh area, and there's two more I haven't even been to um, that I'm trying to. And uh, but no, RWA Uprising Eight is the seventh anniversary. Seventh anniversary, still beating your wrestling mayhem show. Yes, uh, but anyways, got great stuff. Uh, boot camp match: Jimmy Cicero against Nick Nick Espon Taylor. Nick Espon Taylor is a guy you should be watching out for. He's doing some really great stuff. Um, and a street fight between Shane Andrews and Memfo, Memfo Mofo. Memfo Mofo, we had on a few weeks ago as well. Uh, great guy. Uh, it was great, great. He does this online video stuff. Uh, go check that out and find out what what he's doing. Uh, no DQ, no countouts, and no timeline because they went to the draw last month for the RWA Cruiserweight Championship. Jason Gorey versus Amazing Red. Great, great stuff. Uh, and, of course, fans picked the stipulation. Ryan Rain, our guest from last week, against Ashton Amherst. There's a great video that uh, Chachi actually did uh, that you can check out on RWA's Renegade Wrestling Alliance's Facebook page uh, to see what led to it. And, and, and these are two guys... Uh, trained by Corey Graves, Sterling Jane Ke- James Keenan. There's also an article about that going around that you can read uh, the background about that. Uh, also, IWC Wrestling uh, Reloaded 2.0, one year under the uh, Justin Plummer regime. A big, big news here is a singles match between Dylan Bostic, a friend of the show, and Billy Gunn himself. Uh, hey. So that's going to be fun to see. Good that's to see. a that's a that's a very uh, interesting pairing. Mm-hmm. Uh, knowing those two, so I can't wait to see how uh, what rolls out with that. And of course, uh, the 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 reset button it will be uh, going all night long, one way or another. Uh, in every championship, Jimmy Nuts uh, with the heavyweight title, uh, Andrew Palace with the cruiserweight title, and so many more. Uh, they will have mystery opponents. Uh, the tag team, the fraternity, and the, the fraternity is a great tag team. You guys should be checking out. They will all have mystery opponents. So who knows who's going to come up? Uh, uh, friends of the show, old timers, uh, uh, the Gambinos uh, taking on the Founding Fathers. Eric Ecstasy, a part of that. Uh, Chris LaRusso is taking on a mystery opponent. Darren De Niro, another friend of the show, taking on a mystery opponent. Uh, and of course, uh, another friend of the show, Sugar Dunkerton, will be in attendance. Mm-hmm. So uh, you don't know. He could be. He could pop up with a reset button. He could be something else. And the word is, I believe, Virgil will be on hand as well. Awesome. And that's <laughs> all I'm saying about that. Damn you! My, who my who was it? Are, are just in 2016. That you we need. son of a bitch! Um, if we do this, you're interviewing him. You understand oh, this? I'm fine. I'm totally fine with that. I've done my Virgil time. It's your turn. I I don't have a Virgil story. <laughs> so I I need a Virgil story, and this will be it. Oh boy! Uh, we'll send him down your way. Uh, but anyways, uh, so go check out all that stuff. And that's it. Man, uh, and there's indie wrestling all over. Go check it out. Find something in your area or find some stuff online. Support indie wrestling. Watch some indie wrestling. I'm watching as much as I can here. Um, and and it's it's good stuff. It's a good time to be an indie wrestling fan. Amen. Always nice. Always nice. So uh, with that, uh, thank you so much. Thank you to our guest tonight. Um, and uh, go check out everything going on. And bug the IWC guys to get him in Super Indie. Make sure that's going to happen. Uh, IWC Wrestling on the Twitter. Uh, so with that, hey, check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, support us, subscribe. Check us out on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, at Mayhem Show on the on the Twitter's Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Have some great, great conversations. We, we do share some indie wrestling in there as well. Uh, so please uh, uh, pop in for that. Uh, Eamon, at Eamon2, please, on the tweeters. On the tweeters. It's mm. for wrestling, or excuse me, it's for res on the tweeters as well. Oh, uh, yes, and at Sorgatron for me on the Twitters as well. Check out everything at IndieWrestling.us, uh, uh, Pro Wrestling from VOW, IWC, RWA, uh, and, and, and some other documentaries, including Finding Zach Gowan, Montreal Theory, and so much more. And yes, the uh, Legend of Virgil and a traveling merchandise table available on digital download there. Uh, go check it all out. New titles from Vicious Outcast Wrestling and the three-year anniversary and the Iron Men Tournament. 
uh, and then you'll see new ones coming here in the coming weeks as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, we'll see you guys next time, and make sure you're supporting indie wrestling. Oh. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.